Hi, I'm Simon Rushton and this is Taxi Chronicles podcast. On this podcast, we spontaneously interview unsuspecting passengers with their permission, allowing them to share their intimate life stories and concerns. As our slogan states, real riders, real stories. Some riders prefer to be anonymous, while others ask me to tell their story later on. Either way, they are all genuine five to ten minutes stories. So sit back and enjoy this episode. Hi, today we have Brian in the car and he is in the lawyer industry, but we're going to obviously flow and it's, the conversation is going to go where it goes. So we'll start off talking, understanding how he deals with the law and what he does. So when you have to go to a lawyer, you feel a bit more comfortable and stuff. So Brian, how are we today? Just a couple of questions first. How did you get into the industry? What motivates you? And, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you get into the industry? What motivates you? And any interesting stories? Yeah. Well, I suppose um, I got into the industry in quite a embarrassing way. Um, I went to university when I was 18, so back 2001. I left taxi the day after September 11th happened. Okay. And flew over from Ireland where I grew up, and went to London, and I didn't really have any great or, or grander ideas than just to get out of Northern Ireland, which is, which is quite parochial, at least that's how I felt back then. Mm-hmm. You know, go to a city full of music and new people, and the whole excitement that kind of goes along with that. And in the classics were a story of a uni student, like within the first few weeks, I met a girl who uh, became my girlfriend for over three or four years. And whereas I had like no real ideas of the future, she knew exactly what she wanted to do. She wanted to be a doctor and uh, she was so focused. And really just to impress my girlfriend, I decided to embark <laughs> on a career in law. She tried to match her kind yeah, of thing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, so she didn't think I was just some kind of waster. And, to, to be honest, um, the more I kind of got into it, the, the more I um, the more I liked it. Uh, I didn't grow up. I didn't grow grow up in money or anything like that. And I think, where, whereas that doesn't affect you so much when you're young and you have your friends, I realised like living in London, I could really feel the poverty of not having money, you know. Mm. And I had to work twenty hours a week on top of um, studying, and still wasn't earning an awful lot of money. And so it was it was always a bit. It was a bit of a struggle, and I think when you first have a girlfriend as well, as a guy, and it's a bit controversial to say, but you you do feel not having money, you know, hits you harder, yeah, um, yeah. because you know it's, it's impressionable. Just, it's you want to yeah. make an impression, don't you? you if you've got no it. money, yeah. <laughs> Madonna well, says it, isn't it? If you ain't got a JLB, yeah, Madonna yeah. can't be with and, me. <laughs> and in fairness to my girlfriend, she didn't expect a lot or anything, and she certainly wasn't um, older, but she wouldn't have wasted time with me if she was, but. That's how I got into it, and you know, I started. Um, I wasn't doing a law degree, but you can get into law without a law degree if you just do a conversion course. Is so that, I went down that. So is that from any kind of other degree? You yeah, can just do a conversion. Yeah, so if you're doing arts, you can yeah. do a conversion. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, employers will look at different degrees differently, but um, I did that. I, you know, got got a few. I got an internship. Um, eventually got a contract with a firm. Um, which was a kind of exciting moment when that happened. Um, and then I've been in the job now since 2006. Um, I made a partner in, at my old firm in, I think it was 2016. Mm-hmm. Or something. So you've done well for yourself. I've done reasonably well. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a, I work within the kind of corporate law world, so it's, you know, it's, it's not that much you know, personal stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, although I do have some pro bono um, work on the side, but uh, you know it's it's um it's been interesting. I, I started I qualified as a lawyer just when the 2008 crisis happened, and so the whole world was kind of going to shit. And certainly, you know, the banks were collapsing, mm-hmm. so that was a really interesting period. And we're kind of seeing something similar to that now with this COVID crisis, mm-hmm. where a lot of my work since the lockdown began has been defending companies against banks that are um, you know that aren't being paid um, that the provisions of the loan agreement can't be made 
because the company has made a lot of cash because they've not been able to earn um, a lot of some obviously many have, many have survived and done, done fine so we've been very much defending the fort and trying to come up with skillful ways to help that negotiation and have succeeded in a number of situations and then there's also been opportunities for investor clients who because these companies are you know some companies run out of cash they can't find cash from the banking world so these investors are going to say well we'll give you the cash but we need to take a significant portion of it okay. kind of like a dragon's den yeah, yeah of, dragon's den yeah, loan outside. shark kind of yeah but they wouldn't see it as loan shark but they would see it as <laughs> we can we can run this business better we um we'll, we'll keep the business alive we'll keep people employed mm -hmm. um but it's yeah it's it's only all our side of the coin i guess would you say the banks are being unreasonable at times with people? Um, I think the, the banks themselves have generally seemed to be fairly reasonable. And I think, that, you know, they, they, for the most part, they recognize that the vast majority of companies in trouble. It's not a systemic problem with the company, but it is it is a macro event, which will hopefully, um, you know, recede as an issue over the coming 12 to 24 months of no conflicting things. Um, and so for, you know, there's a lot of government pressure on banks to, um, to you know, give, give companies the window and ideally the cash. And the government's obviously been providing a lot of cash to keep, to keep this business alive, mm -hmm. to keep people employed. So, um, you know, one of the deals that we've worked on involved a, a big restaurant chain, I can't say which one, mm -hmm. but um, that is now back operating because they've got this new money in. Um, and so that you know, that's good jobs have been saved. And, mm -hmm. You know, it's rare that I get to feel like I've done yeah, something. Yeah, I'm gonna say, you know, hey, yes, yeah, 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 that, yeah. That, that okay. was that was quite amazing. That's good. That's that's good. You know, it's funny that doing this uh, kind of podcast because as a young lawyer, I work late at night. Um, you know, I was you know doing very very long hours, and because you'd be working late, you'd be able to get a taxi on the firm to take you home. Mm -hmm. And so it was often at one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning that I'd actually have my first kind of human conversation of the day <laughs> that wasn't about work or whatever. And uh, I often had like very interesting conversations with, um, you know, the late night cabbies that were, were taking yeah. me home. Um, they're sometimes a bit of an interesting bunch. Uh, I don't know if, you've, if, you, if you know many people that, that do the late night, but they're, they're normally kind of, I don't know. They're a bit more interesting, or but they're kind of maybe loners themselves. And, yeah. um, it was always a, yeah. anybody who's happy to work through the night yeah. either is married and doesn't want to be home, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <that's... laughs> or it needs all the money he can get, yeah. and he probably hasn't got a home. So either way, I understand some of them they were just they didn't like the stress of the traffic during the day. Yeah. To be honest, I I can relate to that. On the weekends, I try to not work during when like the, the shoppers come out. Where I always say the mum runs on the weekend when the mum starts to go shopping about ten o'clock, ten to um, three. I don't like that time. It's just you're sitting in traffic, and during the week, uh, I, I, you, there's certain areas of London where it's, it's quite busy but small uh, short drops and that's late at night even yeah. one two in the morning so i've kind of leaned towards doing that on, on those kind of things but it's nice when you can just flow and if you miss a turn you can quickly do a u-turn yeah, there's yeah. no yeah there's no congestion whatsoever there's no policeman looking at you or better for the, lorry driver better for the mental health right yeah well i didn't even think about that but yeah, <laughs> yeah that respect so on another note how do you well before we just I move mean, slide over what would you tell the younger Brian when he started out in comparison to what you know now yeah I think that's a good question I'd probably say the sands can shift and things change a lot both in the you know the market that we work in um, as, as well as within firm that you'll operate and I would be less inclined to focus on the existing paradigm that you sit within and recognize that you're going to have to react to situations and the way things are set now will not be the environment that you're trying to advance your career in in a few years time 
So to kind of be a little bit more relaxed, flow, go with the punches, mm -hmm. and see where it takes you. As long as you're getting good experience, learning the skills, and earnestly working hard, you know the opportunities will arise. You know, treat people well, all that stuff. It's it's a big, you know, like a lot of industries, you know, personal relationships mean a huge amount. You know, um, and cultivating those. Um, I'd probably spend a bit more time, you know, trying to meet clients when I was younger and build those relationships. And, you know, that would really, that would have been a, you know, a great thing to have helped with um, you know, where we are now. But uh, that's it. Would you encourage other people to go down the route that you went? Yeah, I still think I still think laws are really it's a really good stable career, and um, you know, while you do get redundancies and stuff. It tends to hold up pretty well when uh, when you go into any of those sessions. Um, it's also a job where you learn a lot. And, um, it's quite nice. It's quite nice to do representation. You know, it might be working for companies, it might be working for individuals, but one way or the other, when you get a good result for somebody who is you know paying your fee, mm -hmm. um, that's a really nice feeling. You mm -hmm. know, um, so I definitely think I definitely you know, say to younger people that it's um, it's a really good valid career um, and there's so many different things you can be a rights lawyer a criminal defense um, or you know corporate finance there's there's so much to do with it so, so why did you pick that specific industry that you're in i think it was i mean i'm not gonna lie it was you know having not had a lot of money growing up um it, it wasn't attractive from that perspective but it also was interesting to work in a global organization that was going to allow you to do a variety of different things, um, maybe even some international travel, um, which you've got to do at the time. And um, I didn't really know much about finance or about mm -hmm. you know corporates. I you know, didn't really get kind a of grip of small time. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was all all, all kind of new. And um, yeah, I was I was fascinated by it. So uh, um, and they paid my law school. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay, so, well, that's a lot, a lot of help as well. Oh, that's yeah. great. That's a, that's a no student loan for you then. Yeah, I had to still take some loans, but they they paid for the fees for the for law school so that was kind of good. So, uh, that's that's yeah. great. Actually, when I did my, I can't remember if my uni paid my student loan or my student fee. Okay. Yeah. So, so how do you feel about how the government's been handling this whole COVID? the whole situation yeah. even where we are today with you can go on holiday but then you can't but you can but if you come back you have to quarantine for two weeks or yeah. quarantine to, how do you think how do you what's your take on that there's um i mean I'm, i have some sympathy because it's a new situation right and we haven't dealt with it before that being said i mean from my perspective the, the issue that we have with politics these days is we just there's just people don't want to go into politics and I don't think there's a very strong talent base so um, you know we look at the education secretary and I don't think he should be anywhere near that job um, I don't think he's got the kind of intellectual credentials for it mm -hmm. um, you know Boris is kind of good for a soundbite he you know, tries to take the facilitary approach of most things he's probably not the worst person out there um, but he's he's filled a cabinet with people I don't think are the right people. Um, you know, UK's done okay. Um, we're, we tend to be very critical of our of our governments in this in this country. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think it's I'd give them a sort of C minus. Um, okay. You know, I, I don't think it's been done brilliantly. But you know, again, it's it's a it's a new situation. It's very easy to criticise when you're. Mm -hmm. the outside, yeah. mm. It's like the Brexit thing's also kicking in what in thirteen days or twelve days, and there's no word, no talk about that. It's just all kind of hush hush under the table. Yeah. Do you think we'll be better off for it? I don't think we'll be better off. Um, I don't know that we'll be terribly damaged either. You know, I think um, time will tell. I think no one really knows for sure, but I think the the sense I get with how you know at least in my job it hasn't seized up investment in the UK mm -hmm. as far as I can tell. The thing I don't like is it kind of gives the impression to European workers that they're not welcome, and you know we, that doesn't help our economy. 
it it's, also, help. it's not a particularly nice look. Yeah, it's not a good it's not a, it's not a good thing at all. It's not a good thing at all. So um, I'm worried that we're gonna see less and less talented people come to London in particular, which is I mean, one of the best things because people mm-hmm. want to be here. You know, people all love London. Yeah. It's a great city. But then in saying that, if every, a lot of people are starting to work from home now, mm. then people can, depending on their job type, people could say, well, I, you, most half of your staff are working from home. So I can stay in Spain, work from home, you can pay me London wages. Yeah. And what's the problem? I mean, that may be the future now, I think. Like, I moved out to Surrey four years ago, and um, I, th- I think more people are going to do that now. Mm. The, you know, certainly in the industry I work in, And work very successfully. You know, we were able to close deals in record time. Um, mm-hmm. You know, which I did, never expected was going to be able to happen. I didn't think, to be honest, I didn't trust my own team that they were going to yeah. be able to work hard. People enough. weren't fluffing, fluffing around. Yeah. They were just doing what they, they had to do on. and getting done. You know, and um, and so I think like life is going to change mm. for the better. I think you know people will be able mm. to have options. You know, on on that note. Um, talking about law, I, I picked up a drug dealer, oh, and right. he was telling, yeah, I, I do an episode, <laughs> on him, I did an episode on him, and he was telling him how he got arrested that day, he had a bit of a domestic with his missus, and um, he didn't go to court because of the COVID situation, Yeah. they just brought a camera in that was linked to the judge, right. the judge was read whatever thing, or a magistrate, or I don't know how to get. Yeah, and he just said, "Okay, you lose your license for 18 months." Mm. So it's amazing how, if you're a lawyer, instead of going to see people, you could just be, let's say, on a criminal lawyer side of things, you could just be doing Zoom calls, mm. interviewing yeah. people. But as long as it's a secure line, our whole business has been done that yeah, way. Yeah, then know? judge the judge will judge people, and then all right. It says it cuts out a lot of the faffering around, but you get a lot of sentences or things sorted out a lot quicker. Yeah. And even domestic wise. Um, it's very interesting that the guy you picked up was quite open about his well, profession. He wasn't open directly, but I can spot one, and right. it's not a stereotypical thing like, oh yeah, you're dressed a certain way or you look yeah, a yeah. certain way. It's a fact that he got in the car, he said, okay, we've got four drops today four drops which right. is very unusual <laughs> and then he changed it to 10 on the journey right. because he's changing like, and then every time he stopped he never got out of the car uh, more or less yeah. it's just like a bit of, a bit of when you've been in this business yeah. uh, I haven't been in this business I didn't know they would use uh, taxis would. for a of course they would because then it's harder to if you're a bill and you're watching them if they can get in a taxi without you seeing them yeah. you, do you see what I mean yeah, that's and he says he only takes um, bitcoin now <laughs> because he doesn't uh, want this gets, corona thing. They're getting smarter. Aren't yeah, they? of course. He said he only takes Bitcoin. He said, forget this. He's not doing that card tap thing or anything. Yeah. It's Bitcoin. Well, you know what's interesting? Um, is it Sean Bailey, the, the the conservative candidate for mayor? Um, but anyway, he's um, uh, he's so he's, he's a black politician. I only say that because he wants to. Um, introduce a um, uh, a mandatory drug testing at all companies in London because he is you know comes from a community that has been he's seen people he knows people that have been murdered as a result of you know drug dealing on the street and that yeah. thing and so he wants to you know basically attack the kind of middle class consumers on yeah. it to try and you know, yeah. deal with that which is interesting. It's yeah. the funny thing is the podcast episode I did on drugs. I said I think the episode was called Drugs. Who what, who's the real problem? Mm. I didn't uh, and I just kind of left it with a question mark because I I talk about the guy and I talk about how the conversation ended. Um, so I was with him for an hour and a half just driving here and there, and he um, he got upset with somebody on the phone. Because somebody called him and used his real name, and he so he phoned this other guy and said, "Only you know my real name, so why are you telling blah 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 yeah, blah?" Yeah, yeah. So he said, "Don't worry, I'm coming to see you, but I'm going upstairs first. 
So I thought, okay, <laughs> where are you going there? He got really irate. I thought, well, wherever you're going upstairs for, I'm not traveling with you to go see this other guy. So I don't know how this thing ends up. And then I spoke about the second part of the uh, episode is the amount of people Sunday morning, early hours Sunday morning, the middle class, the Chelsea, the Twickenham, the Putney, the Knightsbridge, uh, Richmond, who are high yeah. and they get in my taxi. But they're the same people who condemn the drug violence. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, if you compare it to prostitution, you blame, you don't blame the prostitute, you blame yeah. the, the man who's listening to yeah. yeah. Do you understand? Everybody else, the woman or the young girl or whoever is a victim. Yeah. So why would you blame the dealer in this case? You, you yeah. tell the users to, to get their act together. Yeah. And they're all of us, they're all middle class. Yeah. They're predominantly all middle class. It's cheap, isn't it? Even the younger ones. I've picked up some like the equivalent of like Eton school boys or g- g- girls, or even like Eton to boys school. And they're all, they, these people are probably about 16 and they're talking about oh yes yeah we do we've done done lines yeah and I was like really okay <laughs> well there it's a it's a real I think it's a real problem in that mm. the people that grew up with wealth it's like why did they have to work what direction do they have if they're given like you know credit cards and yeah so they just go and they just live this kind of mm. crazy but it, life but they get away in essence I agree with that um that mayor would you say his name is Sean Bain. Sean Bailey, I agree with what he's promoting. He said, yeah, test this lot. Yeah, because yeah, if you yeah. really want to stop the problem with drugs and knife crime and stuff, then these lot, these lot, that's the way to stop it. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. That's the way to stop it. Yeah. So, we'll go down this, uh, the bankers. <laughs> bankers and lawyers are known oh, for that. No yeah. disrespect to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's plenty, there's plenty of that in the industry, I can tell you that. That's yeah. for sure. Um, okay. You know, it's all this kind of like an, an awful lot of pressure and people having, you know, um, bonuses and that type of thing. Yeah. Oh, we test Boris. That we see what come up with Boris well, and his crowd, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That would be funny, George man. Yeah. 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 He said, I sniff, but I never consume. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That'd be like that. Okay, well, on that note, it's been an interesting conversation. That's indeed. Uh, I hope um, any potential student who's considering law, my daughter was one of them, but now she wants to be an orthodontist, um, is very well informed on uh, the financial side of being a lawyer and things. And apart from that, uh, have a nice day. We hoped you liked that episode. Keeping in mind, we never know who we're going to interview. We post twice a day, 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. GMT. Have you ever considered the future economies to invest in? Why not listen to our sister podcast, Africa Investor Stories? Considering Africa has the fastest growing economies and population on Earth and has done for many years, it holds 30% of the world's known natural resources. We publish twice a week, Tuesday, with a guest investor, and Fridays, talking about investment, politics, and history, providing a clear understanding for any potential investor.